Hi, this is Victoria, and welcome to our conference. I'm your host, and today we have Zach with us. Zach, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Zach Edwards. I actually own and have created Historical Conquest, which is basically a game where we wanted to make, we wanted to allow kids to enjoy history, to get something out of it, to be able to use it over and over again, so their memorization of the things that were happening could solidify in their mind. Well, that was phase one. Phase two was actually when we created www.huntthepast.com because of something I'm going to be talking about today was the fact that a lot of parents can't find reliable, age-appropriate, um, and accurate uh, history for their kids. They don't know where to look. And I'm going to describe some of those things and why it's so important to find things that are accurate, straight from the source, and something that you're going to enjoy as well. That's so important. So I know that when I was making one of the Money Munch Kids curriculums, when I was looking at uh, samples and, and doing research, I was having a lot of trouble finding different kinds of samples that I thought were age appropriate for the children I was thinking of targeting at the time. And thank goodness I had professional teachers to help me. Otherwise, uh, it would have been very difficult for me to be able to find materials. And I can imagine a lot of parents have that difficulty as well. Well, huntthepast.com sounds amazing. I know, especially for me, I hated history, so it's really great to see programs like yours that help make history and these kinds of difficult subjects a little easier and a little more fun for kids. So how does it work? How do you get kids interested in history, and is there like a system, or is there like a quiz, or what, what happens? <laughs> when I came out of high school, I really hated history. I actually um, had teachers that would just lecture give us book study and give us tests. And that's all they gave us. And they give us these big, broad understandings of uh, World War II. And it was so boring because they didn't narrow it down to the actual stories of the people. And that's where you get most uh, interest from youth, from anybody. They wanna know about the people and their lives and the things that they went through. You get, there's hundreds of thousands of stories out there. And yet we focus on these broad, uh, descriptions of World War II or the American Revolution, and you lose the person because it becomes mundane. It's just going to become boring. And so a lot of things we do with Hit, Hunt the Past is we found those um, age-appropriate, those accurate resources, and we put them into a system where instead of going online, or say, say you're going into a class and you're learning about the American Revolution, most of the time you're learning about the American Revolution in a bubble. And the reason why I say that is because you learn that the American Revolution happened, but you don't know about what else was happening around the world. We have a system, a search engine that actually shows you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so on our, on our website, the search engine allows you to plug in dates or different eras like the American Revolution, and it'll show you everything else that was happening around the world. So. During the times of the crusade, you can see who else was alive and thriving during that time. The reason why we do that is because a lot of times when someone has one thing that they're looking at and trying to memorize the date, there, there's so many dates out there, they're going to get them mixed up. But if you can correlate two different events at the same time, it allows you to solidify a timeline in your mind. Not just putting one line out and just saying, okay, these things happened during this time. But putting this timeline out for America, this timeline for Asia, and you can see how the world worked and what happened and where advancements came from. And by doing that, you'll, me you'll memorize uh, dates and um, different uh, skills and other things that happen. And uh, your memorization will increase by like 80% because there's an interest and an understanding of what was happening during that time. Wow, so that's really cool. Um, making sure that kids can connect those different concepts and different events in history is very important. I did the same thing when it came to my curriculum in trying to make sure that we had the kids connect various skill sets to the concepts that we were having them learn. So that sounds really interesting. I'm very interested to see like how is it that you are able to make sure that your materials are age appropriate and if, and if a parent goes on to huntthepast.com or if they're just doing research on their own, how are they going to make sure that their materials are the, or the information that they found is age appropriate for their kids? 
Okay, so I was writing these down and I realized that my pen wasn't working very well. So I'm just going to tell you what's what's some uh, different sources that people go to right now these days to find their history. The first one, they go to Wikipedia. So I was I just Googled George Washington just before this interview, and I wanted to see how many hits he had, how many different sites you can go to. There's 1.24 billion different sources you can go to on George Washington. And you know what? Most likely, 99% of them are false. He did not have false. Yeah, he did not have wooden teeth for his life. No, that was a temporary thing until his ivory teeth came in. So he had normal teeth. So, but that's a myth that comes out. Uh, cherry, chopping down a cherry tree, um, Lincoln being born in a cabin. Those are myths to make it interesting. But you know what's really interesting is the accurate history. That's more interesting than all these myths that are out there. So Wikipedia, the first thing that came up every time you look for history is Wikipedia. Now, did you know that when you go to Wikipedia, anyone can edit those wikis? So, yeah, um, those... I actually happen to know a little bit about Wikipedia, but I know a lot of parents Oh, yeah, who don't. exactly. And the interesting thing is they'll give you the source. And I'm going to tell you about, tell you about sources in just a second. But the sources are not fully accurate and there's a reason why not but before i get to there you can also go to the history channel but the thing is is that the history channel like if you go watch vikings it is completely inaccurate it's not actually a good rep representation of the vikings come to find out the vikings were never called the vikings we called them the vikings yeah they were they didn't they didn't actually have a, a name for themselves it depends on the tribe that you had they were just groups of people that went all over the place there were berserkers. There were all these different ones. Now, my, my historian loves telling me about the Vikings. He is adamant about... Everyone loves Vikings. Yeah. They're so cool. He loves watching the History Channel show, but he's like, don't believe a thing that's on there because it's all inaccurate. Uh, another thing that people think is Vikings have uh, had horns out of their helmets. Actually, none of them did. None of them did. I mean, that is a total inaccuracy. Those hats every Thanksgiving and eating giant turkey legs for nothing. There you go. Oh, no, no. The turkey legs is for a reason. I, I, I enjoy them. Well, it just yeah. looks more fun yeah. when you have this Viking style helmet and this giant turkey yeah. leg in front of your face. It just looks cooler. Now I'm finding out that it's all for naught. Yeah. You feel robbed and lied to. There you go. There you go. They want to be able to get it to where students become so excited about history <laughs> that they'll actually go out and do their own research. Okay, so I hit Wikipedia, I hit History Channel, and there's one more. Facebook! Facebook. Of course, Facebook has all the true information, right? Yeah! Oh, yeah, completely. That thing's completely historically accurate. Well, at least from my oh, profile it is. All those <laughs> memes, they, they were totally the quotes of those people, right? Yeah! So the problem with sources is sources are only as good as where they came from. Okay, so uh, sources are... Usually written in Latin, written in Greek, written in a different language, and then, and then that that language, yeah, that that language is then translated. So it's a little bit tweaked at to times, depending on. So right. do you speak other languages? I don't, do but speak? my historians do. My. So I speak two languages and a little bit of like a third one, and I'm actually trying to learn a fourth. And I mean, so I know firsthand, and anyone who speaks multiple languages knows firsthand that. Things do not translate oh, yeah. well. Yeah. Things we, do not. It was funny. I was, my, my daughter's learning uh, German right now, and I, I asked her about a phrase. It was a four-word uh, four phrase, and the accurate translation is actually like eight words. So it's not four for four. It's four to oh, eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, eight words. yes. And so, yeah, there's different inaccuracies that happen throughout translations. Well, then that, that translator gives it to a writer a person writes down that source if they got it correct. And then it goes to stuff like social media where people are telling stories and the, the story becomes distorted a little bit. And it's, it's like, the, you know, the old game of telephone. Yeah, you tell someone so, uh, a phrase, they tell the next person. And by the time it's the end, it's completely Something, distorted. Yep, completely different. Yeah, so. Just doesn't exactly. make sense anymore. So parents, parents are so driven to find accurate information that comes from the source. So while I was doing other workshops, like I last year I was doing one on the brain and how the brain operates and how you can memorize things a lot easier using, uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, but brain palaces, mind palaces. 
Um, oh yeah, yeah, mind palaces. That's the whole Sherlock thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's an actual, it's an actual thing. And at some point, I could, t- I could tell you about that. But uh, a lot of the parents were like, "Okay, that's great, but how do you find accurate information to memorize? How do you find an, uh, accurate information with history, especially that's age appropriate?" And it is the hardest. Thing. So I was I was just about to ask you, you know, what if, if their parents are looking doing research besides, you know, going to to your stuff for maybe like other subjects, what can they do? Like maybe I don't know, like, like three things that they can do to help make sure that the information is reliable. And so you said uh, check the sources. Yeah, actually, I would say that the best thing to do, the first thing you want to do, is find out what the sources are for that site, that group. Whatever program that you're using, go to the sources. Find out what their sources are. Actually ask for them. Now, a lot of times when you go to Wikipedia, they're going to have sources at the bottom. A lot of, a lot of them, like I said, are like repeats from That's other – they're like the telephone game where you're, where you're getting all this information. Someone might write a book, but they're writing books from other people's books. And so that information is being distorted. Every time a new book is written on a new subject, it's being distorted. So go back as far as possible to find the sources and see if they go to the uh, pure source, the, the Latin, the Greek, in history. If it's science, make sure they go back to the source in uh, English and in, in math. Now, math is a, not really one that you have to worry about the sources, but th- there are the some things in stuff, math. Yeah, for like um, particular equations. Exactly. So how many jumps back or like rabbit holes did you go down have you seen or estimate like is there like after for example five is there this that about it or is there like a stopping point because I can just see parents asking uh, or go being like going down a rabbit hole for hours oh yeah well actually think of it the opposite way so the le- least uh, rabbit holes you have to go to to get back to the actual source yeah is the more accurate oh. so if you only have to jump through two sources to find hey this is the Latin or the Greek or or why not in history, then that's more accurate than, oh, we went down five different ones, but we checked it every time. Well, what did you check it against is the question. So it's not that they're becoming more accurate. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. Yeah. So you want the least sources as possible. All you know, right. So check your sources. Don't go down all the rabbit holes. The sooner the better. Yeah. Is there anything else that they should be looking for? Yeah. I think uh, tip number two, look at the people that are producing the the product, the program, you want to make sure that there are no biases. See, in the history, you can think there's so many biases, especially like the United States and the British. How did, what actually happened in the American Revolution? Well, there is no, there's no British aspect and American aspect. It's history. There is one aspect. And so you want to be able to get the most accurate. And so you want to look at the people that are producing it to make sure that they are right. Now, it same goes with like YouTube. Look at the people. Look at what they're presenting. Go to their other YouTube videos to find out all these all the different things that they've done in the past and where their biases might be pointing. Because if there's a bias, you might not you might want to double think or think again about using them. But again, history is one thing. It's not it's not aspects. It's not opinions. It's not biases. It's one thing. Um, I was talking about it earlier with you about uh, Marxist historiography. Basically, what that is is it was Marxist that was Marx that was trying to get people to be pointed to one direction. That was a bias. Uh, a lot of public schools they have the same thing, though they don't really try. It's more the textbooks that have done this. They're trying to point people in certain directions and not talking about other things, and that's the issue. That's the problem. Bias. Yeah, I can, I can totally see that in public schools because you know they have so many kids that they have to get through this material with in so much of a time, and you know they can't be like parents at home, and you're like, yeah, sure, let's take two hours and dive into this particular historical event because you're all jazzed up about it. So, but you know, if they're really interested in it, then you know we want to encourage them, particularly when it's something like uh, history and it's a niche. So, is there? That's number two. Do you have any more? I got one more. Third one awesome. is look, the Trinity. Look, yeah, the Trinity. There you go. Look for the the um, updates. Now there are things that change and new things that are found uh, about like when the Dead Sea Scrolls came out. Yeah. History was like blown apart to some extent. There's new things that need to be added on. 
the problem is that if you look at like textbooks, remember from back in college, some of you guys went to college, you go to college and you get textbook edition number five. But, oh, you can't use that. That was last year's. Now we have to go to number six and you have to pay $200 for this. Ugh, and yet number five was like 40 bucks at that point. So why can't I use that and have like an insert of the new changes? Well, you don't need any of those. If you, if you can, find a program that basically updates you for free every time. Yeah, every time the glory nothing, of the internet. Yes. It's entered in. And that's what the digital is so great at. Yes, a lot of people want to have a physical, tactile uh, textbook, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to pay for ed edition number one, edition number two, edition number 10 or 20. Yep. But if you are able to get to a digital resource that updates, then you should be able to get for free each time they update. It's, it's automatically there and it's for free. Every time there's an update, it should go to you. So those are three tips. Go to the source. You want to be able to know who... Um, uh, where the information is coming from and make sure it's the most accurate. The least steps to find the source is the mo most likely the more accurate. Um, you want to find out who the people are because you don't want biases. And the problem is, is that biases are going to make things uh, more inaccurate, less age appropriate because they're going to be going off on what is important to them. Um, and then the other thing you want to do is look at if they're going to update the information that you have. Now, with history, history is written, and it should be set in stone. But there are things that come up that need to be added oh, on, yeah. much like, again, the Dead Sea Scrolls. That was a, a new discovery. Aren't we still decoding the Rosetta Stone? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's yeah. the Code of uh, Hammurabi, uh, the Rosetta Stone. There's the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. There's all these different things that are coming up. And it's not that they're going to be disproving or improving uh, the information that you have. But it could be just that there's the fact that there's another source as well. Yeah. And again. And adding more context, supporting materials or disproving something or giving you a little extra flavor text. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this event. And uh, we'll see you later. Hopefully up on your site. Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh Allow me to, to talk about this and how important sources are. That's, that's one of the things that I love talking about.